White House officials considered putting a number on just how many daily COVID deaths are acceptable, a metric that would show that the pandemic is finally behind us. According to Politico, the number that was considered was 200. 200 people dying a day would mean the virus has finally been tamed. There are currently about 300 people dying each day of COVID. Ultimately, officials decided not to incorporate a desired daily death number into their official pandemic plans. They perhaps correctly concluded that it would be bad optics. Another reason it was likely scratched? The number of deaths matter less than who is actually dying. Because as we've seen throughout the pandemic, the U.S. government is willing to tolerate a lot of death among its working class. In fact, new data on just how devastating the pandemic has been for workers, especially during the first year of the pandemic. Scientists in Florida looked at roughly 70,000 coronavirus deaths during 2020 and examined the socioeconomic positions of those who passed. What they found was that individuals with a lower socioeconomic position, predominantly blue-collar working-class Americans, were five times more likely to die of COVID-19 than those in higher socioeconomic positions. Conclusions were published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. Here's the relevant data. Quote, high socioeconomic positioned whites aged 25 to 64 were largely shielded from COVID-19 mortality during the first year of the pandemic. They comprised more than one quarter of the study population, but accounted for only 5% of the COVID-19 deaths. Now contrast that with this, quote, Hispanic and black working class men comprised only 8% of the 25 to 64 year old population, but they were 29% of the premature COVID-19 deaths. Researchers concluded that what was driving most death early on in the pandemic was the hazardous nature of work, particularly blue collar work. Paper notes that, quote, people with high socioeconomic positions retain a far greater degree of discretionary control over their professions, work lives, and daily schedules than workers of low socioeconomic positions. For many, a college degree and a professional status permits a measure of autonomy and flexibility in meeting job requirements that allowed them to protect themselves during the early days of the pandemic. They could work from home, skip meetings, cut down on face-to-face interactions with customers. On the other hand, the lower rungs of the working class didn't have those freedoms. The report describes it, quote, In contrast, the working class in blue-collar, service, and retail sales occupations are subjected to authoritarian control and inflexible requirements of work. Moreover, the work sites in which the working class perform their wage labor are often replete with physical, chemical, and biological hazards, which directly and negatively impact workers' health and well-being. Researchers said that the conclusions warrant stronger state and federal labor protections and a more active role for OSHA in enforcing workplace safety regulations. What the researchers didn't consider is that this is the result of a policy decision, one that sacrificed workers in order to keep profits high, in order to keep the lines moving up. Current CIA director Gina Haspel personally witnessed a torture session back in 2002. That's according to the New York Times, which covered a hearing last month at Guantanamo Bay, where testimony was given that put Haspel in the torture chamber. A crank psychologist, James Mitchell, who alongside his partner, John Bruce Jessen, designed the government torture program and made a lot of money doing it, testified that Haspel watched while he and Jessen waterboarded Saudi detainee Abda el-Rahim Nashiri. Now, it was previously known that Haspel was a station chief at a secret prison in Thailand where Nashiri was subjected to waterboarding. It was also known she wrote cables about the torture and also that she helped destroy tapes depicting the torture. All of that stuff is pretty bad, but there was enough deniability still for Haspel to be confirmed as the CIA director back in 2018. But during that confirmation hearing, she was asked directly if she ever witnessed or engaged in any acts of torture. And Haspel refused to answer the question, 
claiming she can't disclose classified information. Now we know it's because the answer was yes, and she didn't want her nomination sunk. Although it probably wouldn't have endangered her nomination anyway, not a single person has ever been held accountable or punished for operating in a legal torture program. But the CIA director should be added to the list of Americans subject to arrest on international war crimes charges the second they leave the country. Elon Musk is threatening to walk away from his Twitter takeover deal, which he can't do without having to pay Twitter $1 billion, because he says Twitter won't let him scrutinize its estimate of how many fake accounts are on its network, which he doesn't have the right to do because he waived his right to perform due diligence. This guy is a fucking idiot. Still, Texas Attorney General Bill Paxton is trying to do Elon a favor. Paxton announced Monday that he is investigating Twitter, quote, for potentially false reporting over its fake bot accounts in violation of the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act. As if it wasn't obvious who this was for, Paxton practically admitted that he was doing this to carry water for Musk, whose car company Tesla is based in Austin, Texas. In the press release, Paxton's office said, quote, Twitter has received intense scrutiny in recent weeks over claiming in its financial regulatory filings that fewer than 5% of all users are bots, when they may in fact comprise as much as 20% or more, which is basically a number that he got from Elon himself. The Texas Attorney General is basically if one of Elon's reply guys had subpoena power. And that's so embarrassing. If I talk about this anymore, I might wince to death. And finally, a free school lunch program that ensured access to food for 10 million working class kids during the last two years of the pandemic is now set to expire at the end of the month. As part of the COVID relief legislation passed in March 2020, the U.S. Department of Agriculture gave schools child nutrition waivers that allowed them to be reimbursed for providing free meals to all students, even those who could afford to pay. Previously, kids racked up meal debt and parents were required to fill out paperwork and show income verification to receive any support. But under the new guidelines, schools had more resources to beef up their meal programs. And it's estimated that over the last two years, 4.3 billion meals have been distributed under this program, which would be a 30-fold increase from before the pandemic. And now this rare example of good governance is about to disappear. The program expires on June 30th, and there is not enough interest on Capitol Hill to extend it. There is actually legislation introduced to do so, and it does have the support of a majority of U.S. senators, including two Republicans, Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. It even has the support of Democratic austerity hawks like Joe Manchin in Kirsten Cinema. But there's not enough support to overcome a Republican filibuster led by minority leader Mitch McConnell, who opposes the bill, claiming that the free lunch program is no longer necessary. Kids no longer need to be fed at school, I guess. You know, back in the day, Margaret Thatcher proposed getting rid of free milk at British schools, and that earned her the nickname Thatcher the Milk Snatcher. So I guess that means the Senate Minority Leader needs a nickname. Let's go with Mitch, the lunch bit. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.